One, two, microphone check. One, two, one, two.
Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you for attending this side event. Um, so I'm, I'm Fenya Mara. I'm Marine Advisor at the French Biodiversity Agency. So I'm, I'm chairing the, the side event today, which is co-organized by the um, French Ministries of Ecological Transition and Cohesion in the Territories, the French Ministry of Foreign um, Affairs, and also the, the GEF that we um, that we uh, warmly thank to, uh, to host us today in their pavilion, and the French Development Agency, AFD. So this aid event is about the networks of protected area managers in France and in the European Union that, uh, that are contributing to a successful implementation of the 30 by 30 target at a global scale. Um, this is a side event that, uh, which is organized in, in the framework of uh, the ongoing negotiations here in COP15 uh, related to targets uh, related to protected areas and the high ambition coalition of, uh, of parties, of a pa uh, pa party of parties who are, um, support, who are very supportive with the 30 by 30 objective to be discussed in the global biodiversity framework uh, at COP15. Um, furthermore, this objective is already included in the European in this, in this biodiversity strategy strategy for 2030 of the European Union, and it even includes a, a more ambitious objective of 10% of strictly protected areas in 2030, and uh, this. 30 by 30 objective is included in the French strategy for protected areas in 2030 with an equivalent uh, objective of 10% of, um, prote uh, so it's not strictly protected areas, it is, please help me, uh, in the, the French target it's about 10% of, strictly protected. this is in the, f in the European Union, strongly, strongly protected areas, so this is, also, to uh, everyone has its own definition. This is one of the points that we will see that MPAs and levels of protection have their own uh, definition. Um, and so, I'm, I'm happy today to uh, to uh, coordinate uh, this, uh, no, to to chair and coordinate this uh, this event, um, because the French Biodiversity Agency is really supportive uh, with networking activities uh, and networks of uh, protected areas managers. Um, this is the case with uh, the partnership with uh, the association, the Federation of Natural Reserves in France, and um, Ritoma is here today as uh, the director of this association to uh, bring up uh, an initiative, uh, Inter Networks Initiative for Cooperation. Uh, the French Biodiversity Agency is also supporting, for instance, METPEN, which is a regional network of uh, marine protected areas managers in the Mediterranean, and is very active also in another European project, which is called Ocean Governance, and which gathers together um, regional networks of uh, MPA managers. Uh, today, also, the, 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 this event uh, wants to highlight how uh, we can bring a transformative change thanks to, uh, thanks to uh, networking activities, which is uh, one of the recommendations from IPBS, because networking enables to have an innovative approach uh, and also to strengthen the governance. And this is one of the key elements from IPBS uh, recommendations. Um, and Obviously, what's in the, what is in the DNA of, of networks of uh, protected areas managers is capacity building, exchange, technical exchanges, and providing skills and transfer of, of expertise. So this is why today we have a round table and then some representatives from, uh, from, uh, from parties uh, that can highlight uh, concrete implementations that contribute to this 30 by 30 uh, objective. So I would like to introduce my first speaker. So we have a round table with three speakers. There will be uh, two series of, of presentations. So we can have a, a, a more animated presentation. So Marie-Thomas, the floor is yours, please. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to apologize my, in advance for my English, which uh, is a little rusty, <laughs> and this speech is not uh, very easy uh, for me. So I'm, in fact, the director of uh, Reserve Naturelle de France, Natural Reserves of France, one of the strong protection tools in France. However, I'm not speaking on behalf of my organization, but I'm on behalf of the initiative to we are to, uh, that we are carrying out as part of an internet work around international cooperation with the Federation of Regional Natural Parks of France, the Federation of Conservatories of Natural Areas of France, and the National Parks of France. To begin with, I would like to review the importance of protected areas in the battle against, against the erosions of biodiversity. We justify the objective we are defending in the context of the Convention of Bio Bi Biological Di Diversity to protect and efficiently manage at least 30% on the world's land and 30% of its seas by 2030. Protected areas are recognized tools for biodiversity conservation. The latest IPBES 2019 report has uh, reiterated the effectiveness of protected areas as a solution to biodiversity loss, recommending that they be reinforced in all ecosystems. Protected areas contribute directly to the protection of wildlife, the preservation of genetic diversity, natural habitats, species, communities and landscapes, sites of ge geological interest, and to maintain natural processes, ecosystems and their functioning. Protected areas also contribute to climate change mitigation and adaptation. They are privileged places for reconnecting society with nature. Concerning the specificity of French, French protected areas and their assets with regard to the 30 by 40 objective, I would like to stress first of all that in French, protected areas constitute an essential link in the ecosystem of territories in, ecology, in the ecological transition. They offer models for sustainable development of activities that reconcile production and the protection of nature. Well, the French model aims to conserve nature and protect biodiversity while ensuring the sustainable development of activities on territories. If you take the very definition of a protected area in France, a protected area is a clearly defined geographical space, recognized, consecrated, or managed by any effective legal or other means. In order to ensure the long-term conservation of nature, as well as its ecosystem services and the cultural values associated with it. For 60 years, France has been developing a biodiversity preservation policy through a multitude of tools, regulatory tools such as uh, Natural Reserves of France, contractual or incentive measures such as regional natural parks or Natura 2000 sites, land protection tools such as the sites of conservatory of natural areas on, or the sites of the coastal conservatory, etc. So it's the diversity of tools their good coordination on their management adapted to each territory that makes it possible to deal with the diversity of ecosystems and cultures and to increase the resilience of the French network of protected areas. Another French specificity is to have developed an inclusive governance for its protected areas, which today allows the mobilization of all the actors of the territory. The French model, with regard to its specificities, is a real asset to achieving the 30 by 30 objective. It's a model that promotes democratic values 
embody embodied in the management of protective area and pro access to nature. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so my um, second speaker is uh, Mr. Sébastien Moncar on behalf of uh, Madame uh, Maud, um, sorry. Maud de Lièvre as, a pres as president of the French Committee of IUCN. And the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Fenya. Good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm, I'm working at the uh, IUCN French Committee, so the International Union for Conservation of Nature, which is a huge network of uh, organizations work, working for biodiversity, biodiversity conservation. And uh, we are also convinced that the achievement of the objective 30 by 30 will need uh, more cooperation between the different countries. So uh, we, t we try to, to take part of, a, of this uh, cooperation with a French organization, with a French uh, experts. And uh, we, uh, for us, there's uh, two main issues on the objective 30 by 30. The first issue is, uh, is the quant uh, quantity of uh, protected areas. We have to increase the coverage of uh, protec protected areas around the world, so we have to exchange on the best way to, uh, to create, to convince uh, for the creation of new protected areas in the world. And the second main uh, objective uh, issue is the, is the quality of, uh, of the protection, so the effective management of uh, protected uh, areas. And uh, on this uh, subject, we are currently working on uh, two international uh, projects. Uh, first, uh, we uh, coordinate the francophone network of uh, uh, the green list of uh, IUCN. So IUCN has created the, uh, the green list uh, standard um, that uh, is, is, is a useful tool to measure the effectiveness of the management of uh, protected areas. And uh, today there are more than, than uh, 10 francophone countries that are involved in the IUCN Green List uh, process. We have uh, 25 uh, protected areas in Francophone countries that are uh, inscribed on the IUCN uh, Green List. Uh, 20, 22 of them are, uh, are protected areas from France. And uh, we have now uh, uh, 15 new applications. 12 of them came from, uh, come from um, West, Western Africa, so we try to develop the, the IUCN uh, community uh, on, on a green list in the francophone uh, countries. So we have some, uh, some working group working with others, working group in, uh, in francophone uh, 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 countries to, to work to together on the best uh, practices to, uh, to implement the green list uh, standard. So this is the first project, and we have a, a second one, which is called uh, SoBiodev, as is supported by the French Agency of uh, Development. And uh, we have, uh, in fact, created a, a platform for, uh, for uh, French NGOs that are working on biodiversity issues outside of uh, France, mainly in francophone countries. And we saw that 70% uh, of these NGOs are working in or just outside protected areas. So uh, we, we, uh, we create and we coordinate this platform to develop exchange of uh, experience, uh, once again best practices to, uh, to develop a cooperation between French NGOs and local NGOs in francophone uh, country uh, to, um, to, to, uh, to develop some project on, on conservation of ecosystem or species but also uh, to develop some project on sustainable economic activities for the, for the local uh, communities. And uh, this is linked with uh, another project that we manage. We have a project that is called uh, the program uh, on small scale initiative, pro program sur les petites initiatives, that is financed the, by the French uh, GIF. And we, we want also to connect French NGOs with, with French, uh, uh, with uh, francophone 
uh, African uh, NGOs to develop some, uh, some, some project together in order to, to achieve and to, to contribute to this objective 30 by 30. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very So thank you very much. We have already, I have noticed some already with the two presentations, some uh, key words like uh, cooperation, tools, uh, management effectiveness. We have a first series of examples of how to make minds wide in cooperation. And it's great to be here in Quebec for uh, an international conference, COP15, but also to talk about francophonie. Uh, that, that's great. And we can also have a wider uh, scape of cooperation via the European Union. So I invite now my third speaker, Mr. Theo, Theo van der Sluis, who will present a first series of presentation. So you are project leader of Natura 2000 Biogeographical Process on behalf of the European Commission. So you will explain in for the first round a little bit more about this biogeographical process in Natura 2000, please. Thank you, Finia, for introducing me. Oh. Um, I'm Theo van der Sluis. I'm from Wageningen Environmental Research, but indeed I'm here presenting on behalf of the European Commission. Uh, the biogeographical process is dealing with the implementation of Natura 2000. Um, you all know, or most of you will know, the Natura 2000 network. You see here a map behind me showing uh, well, how huge it is. In fact, it is the largest protected area network in the world, as one network. And you see the details, the number of habitats and species protected. Um, it is also strongly protected. Um, the directive is very strict. So uh, it really means that all countries have to um, be in line with the directives. Uh, if they fail to protect those areas, they might either be called by the uh, European Court of Justice or by the national legislation to implement the legislation. So it's a very important and strong conservation network. On top of those protected areas, there are also still the national protected areas that the countries have. Um, well, despite that, uh, it is not all going so well. If you look at the conservation status of habitats and species, um, many habitats and species are in decline or are in poor conservation status. Uh, so uh, there are some exceptions, like for instance some forests. Forests in general, they are performing better. Birds in general, they, they are reasonably well protected. Uh, but other species often show a decline. So, one might say we are not bending the curve yet. Um, but I must also say we did some research in 2016 comparing uh, the, the species of the directives inside and outside Natura 2000 areas and then you see a very positive trend within areas and outside it is much worse. Well, to bend that curve, uh, the European Commission uh, brought out the Biodiversity Strategy 2030 uh, with very specific targets. And they have adopted the 30 by 30 target for protected areas. And behind me, you can see the, the data. At the moment, um, we have some 25% of terrestrial areas already protected and some 11% of marine areas are protected. However, that is on average for all European countries. And for instance, some countries like Spain, uh, Croatia, Bulgaria, they have a larger share uh, and other countries might have only like 10, 15% protected. So there's still work to do to reach that 30 by 30 target. On top of that, uh, there is a second ambition uh, in the strategy to uh, bring 30% of the species currently not in good conservation status in good status. So that's an additional target to bend that curve. I should add also, this is voluntary. 
it is not by law at a moment. Uh, all countries are participating in this process, and I will explain later why and how uh, to, to reach those targets. Um, this doesn't come by itself. It is not just a matter of uh, defining protected areas and some legislation. The Natura 2000 is also a network of people. They are very much behind it. And uh, those people are brought together, for instance, around biogeographical seminars. I will come back later to that. Um, other networking events where they exchange experiences. There's communication around conservation, exchange of knowledge and scientific information. Um, also, uh, we stimulate transboundary cooperation, cooperation between countries uh, on, on protected areas. And we recommend or we, we encourage very much the involvement of stakeholders, the, the people that are living in their protected areas or around the protected areas. So that is all, well, the, the focus from the biogeographical process. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. So we have a, a first series of, uh, of presentations on complementary strategic approaches related to this uh, 30 by 30 objective. Thank you very much. At the same time, you, you have showcased uh, with a series of examples on how we can make it. That's, that's great, but there is, of course, still to do, and we have 2030 as a milestone to, uh, to, uh, to have this, uh, this objective. I say milestone because the vision of CBD is 2050, to live in harmony with, uh, with nature. Um, and now I would like to ask you again to pick up one of these examples and to talk a little bit more about that. So again with uh, Marie-Thomas, uh, I invite you to, to present the Internetwork Initiative for International Cooperation. And I would like also uh, at, at this moment maybe to take just a second to thank uh, Emmanuel Sarah, who is on the backstage, you cannot see her, but she, she's the one who coordinated the, the, the organization of the side event. And so it's, it's really uh, great, great work. And she's the one who is also coordinating this initiative inside the uh, Réserve Naturelle de France. So the floor is yours to present us this uh, initiative, please. Today in France, we have a vast of diversified professional network of protection areas. As I have previously mentioned, with numerous structures and practices, varied skills and specificities. So in view of this, we have taken the initiative of gathering together as an internet work around a mechanism to mobilize the expertise of French protected area managers in international cooperation projects. The system, which is currently centered on our network aids, is intended to be open to all French protected areas. The objective um, and the originality of the approach is to propose exchanges of expertise between peers with managers who, who inter intervene directly and who come to meet and support other managers in the field. In this way, we aim to transfer expertise and know-how and achieve mutual benefits. Well, this project management assistance unit is made available to other countries and to international cooperation actors. It brings together skills and allows us to offer a range of services by proposing customized teams adapted to needs. For example, uh, you can mobilize expertise in the following areas. Adaptation to clim climate change, species reintroduction, territorial marketing, development of ecotourism, reception of the public, conservation of wetlands, environmental education, management, knowledge and monitoring of biodiversity, ecological planning, ecosystem restoration, management of invasive species, protection of geolo geological heritage, etc. 
This, is, this very recent system has already been integrated in international cooperation project financed by French development agency, particularly the Varuna program, or which you can see photo uh, scoring on, on, the sc on the screen. The four-year program in the Western India Ocean will enable the installation of a network of marine protected areas managers in the Indian Ocean to strengthen the capacities and efficiency of the management of marine protected area in this zone by setting up uh, companionship, training, training on common tools for efficient and trans transcend management. Beyond this world of uniting skill, the mechanism plays a role of resource center for international cooperation of protected areas by animating and training the community of cooperating managers on the bridge between the actors on the ground and the institutional actors involved in the implementation of 30 by 30 objectives at the global level. To conclude, conclude, I would like to say that the operationalization of the post-2020 framework will require pilot initiatives such as those we are presenting to you today. To take action, we need engineering, we need to create a network of protected areas managers, we need to support the development of skills, we need to invent, innovate, experiment and deploy solutions that work. Protected areas must benefit from everyone's expertise and support to build collective solutions at the global level. Thank you very much. And if you have any question about the Inter Network Initiative of International Cooperation, Emmanuel is here to answer any question you may have. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. So um, now, um, Sébastien, I invite you maybe to tell us even more about the project So Biodev, please. Uh, yes, I, I wanted to share with you the main uh, recommendation within the framework of, uh, of this project So Biodev. We organized uh, a workshop in, uh, in April in, in Paris on, on how uh, the French uh, protected areas and the French uh, biodiversity actors can contribute to the uh, achievement of the 30 by 30 objective at the international level. So there were uh, four main uh, recommendations from, uh, from this workshop. And, uh, but I wanted to share with you. The first one, as Marie said, is uh, that we need uh, more expertise and uh, experience sharing between the different actors. Uh, from the actors from the from the north, like like France, and, and actors from the from the south. So we need to facilitate this uh, exchange of experience and this this uh, cooperation for the improvement of the management of uh, protected areas, and uh, to identify together the best approaches and the best uh, practice. Uh, the second recommendation is that uh, we need to have good governance process that uh, really include and associate uh, local communities in the management of uh, uh, protected areas. The, the third one is that uh, we have to adapt uh, the, the project, the action at the, uh, at the local context. We need to take account not only the uh, ecological issues, but also the economic and social uh, issue it's a, it's a, it's a key point to uh, to to associate the, the local communities in the in the management of uh, protected areas and uh, the four uh, and the last recommendation is that we need to increase the level of funding uh, for uh, for for biodiversity conservation in the south and uh, and, uh, and specifically for the management of protected areas, we know, uh, we uh, already heard uh, since the beginning of this conference that it's a big issue uh, to have uh, specific and, and more funds dedicated to biodiversity conservation, uh, especially in the southern countries. Thank you.
Thank you very much for sharing these uh, recommendations. I think it's uh, an important input for the, for the ongoing negotiations to COP15 and hopefully the messages through, through the website and through the micros and here in, in the room can be a uh, touch, the decision makers. Um, and so uh, last but not least uh, way to uh, implement the 30 by 30 uh, thanks to the biogeographical process and natural 2000 directives. So tell us even more about that. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, well, uh, the biogeographical process brings together all parties, all people involved, all stakeholders that are uh, involved in the conservation of sites, in uh, setting targets, etc. So that can be the, the national government representatives, the park managers. Um, it is also representatives from the NGOs that are involved, from, from Habitat Forum or IUCN, etc., to discuss opportunities around conservation. Um, in doing so, uh, it has already improved a lot the efficiency of conservation because countries ex exchange their experiences, they exchange their knowledge, and they together they um, develop new approaches towards conservation. Um, it has improved monitoring, likewise, also by exchanging uh, uh, approaches, harmonizing methods. Uh, there is better monitoring now, and management is and has improved over the years. Um, also, financing has been improved and the reporting by the member states uh, over the several reporting periods that we have ha had over the past 18 years has improved a lot. Um, most importantly, I think, it has also brought the ambition to a higher level. Countries on their own uh, do not reach so high as when they discuss their, together their ambitions, their targets, and together they can come further. And also the network of protected area areas demonstrates that. In this process that we have catalyzed, you might say, uh, very importantly, we have the, the biogeographical seminars. Um, this map, the different colors, shows the different biogeographical regions. And in every region, there has been three seminars over the, the past 10 years or so. Every three years, there's such a seminar where all the representatives from the countries in that region come together and discuss approaches towards conservation. So this is a very important point in time, also for informal networking and making contacts across borders and developing initiatives for transboundary cooperation. Um, further, uh, further, there's also um, formal, informal meetings uh, with the member states, with the new strategy. Uh, it has been discussed with member states how that can be realized, should be realized. The, the countries have been given guidance on, on uh, how to set their targets. Just two weeks ago, we had a workshop in Brussels with 60 live participants and 100 online participants about fish conservation and river restoration. And uh, that, that helps countries to define their targets, set targets for fish species or river restoration measures. So that's a way to work in this new process to, to reach the 30 by 30 target. Um, capacity building, training, that is very important through the networking events. I will come back to that. And we also provide documentation, documentation for the seminars, documentation for those events, and we put them online. And also the European Commission provides particular documentation for certain issues like energy or whatever, uh, what is relevant for Natura 2000. Um, well, networking events uh, are important, and these are just a few examples, but every year we organize or host some six to eight or ten events. Um, early this year we had a, an event uh, on temp temporary Mediterranean ponds in Rome. Um, 
there was a networking event in Spain about flyways for Western European birds and the stepping stones for those birds. Um, I mentioned the freshwater event, monitoring uh, with drones and other techniques that are used. Okay, and the Posidonia event. And well, you can see some pictures. I'm coming to a close. Um, from the Dutch, co uh, the European cooperation that we are stimulating, I, I want to look further south. There are many opportunities that we should grab. I just give an example, for instance, of the Casa area, the Cavango Zambezi Transfrontier Conservation Area, where we worked also on a conservation plan for Choma. Um, there is a large network of protected areas. On the right map, you see all the animal migration taking place in those areas. The potential is there to enhance those networks, to stimulate cooperation. Financing, as Sebastian also mentioned, that is crucial. There should be funds, uh, whether from, from Europe or other countries, stimulating that cooperation. The government should show commitment. They, they must stand up to, to grab that chance. Research can be very uh, helpful to, to identify, for instance, where those migration corridors are and how we can stimulate uh, or reduce the human-wildlife conflict. Capacity building, events, networking events are very important. And lastly, and mostly perhaps, people should have ownership for these networks. Thank you very much. So I thank you also for, uh, for the rich contributions. And I, we will change the, the speakers because now I would like to invite representatives from the country. So please join the, the audience. And I am inviting uh, Mr. Ernest Daman, Damane and uh, Senor Jorge Alonso Rodriguez, por favor. Okay, so we, we had a series of uh, a diversity of concrete examples from the ground with institutional uh, support of how protected areas managers in France at the European level, but also from uh, other parts of, uh, of the planet, are actively and strongly engaged to contribute to the implementation of the 30 by 30 targets. Um, and uh, we had also, in this dynamic, in these initiatives, they, they engage also with a diversity of authorities and, and uh, with the stakeholders at multi-scale levels. Uh, so I, uh, we invite you here at this second round table to see from your point of view, in one hand, what are your needs also for the, this 30 by 30 um, target implementation and your expectations. And if you can also illustrate this by a concrete example of cooperation, uh, including uh, protected areas uh, managers. There is a, a seat with, with nobody there. We, we are really sorry. We, we were expecting to have uh, Miss Nani Ratsifandria Manana, I hope I, I spell it right, correctly, from Madagascar. She, She's president of the administ administration board of the Federation of Protected Areas and Biodiversity in Madagascar, and his country director. And unfortunately, she cannot be here today with us. It, it's really a pity because we, we were expecting a, a, a great contribution also from Madagascar. But let's start this roundtable with South Africa, please. And do you have an example of cooperation engaging uh, uh, protected areas managers that you would like to share with us, please? Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I'll try and, 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 and respond in English. Uh, from South Africa, we have 11 official languages. So if, if I can choose any of those uh, besides English, then I don't think we'll be able to understand each other. So I'll try my, I'll try my best. Yes, we, as, as Sandparks, uh, we have developed an international cooperation strategy 
to, to align our mandate, especially with the premier conservation agency in South Africa, and also extending our collaborative activ activities uh, uh, globally. And this strategy is actually seeking to clarify our objectives and priorities in terms of uh, foster, uh, fostering international corporations. So I, I can list a few of those uh, because I'm representing scientific services, which is a conservation department in, in South African national parks. And among other uh, agreements that we have an international cooperation, uh, there is one on four party agreements uh, between South Africa and France. Uh, firstly, with the South African National Biodiversity Institute, uh, that is Sunbeam. And the lead project is titled uh, Building Biodiversity Knowledge uh, for Action in South Africa. And this provides opportunities really to build on uh, expertise and capacity exchange between Sun Parks, uh, between Sunbi and uh, OFB. It's, it's just one. And the other agency is us, of course, Sun Parks. And that is also looking into capacity exchange uh, between between us as an entity and an OFB in the marine uh, protected uh, areas. And, and it's of course, like I've said, between OFB and, and FD, uh, AFD in, in France. The second one is also on a bipartite financial agreement uh, that is between Sand Parks and uh, AFD. And in this one, the, the French government also confirmed its uh, willingness to, to fund the project through a grant uh, during the first three years of, of, of implementation. And the agreement was signed around 2019. And, and the third one is uh, between the Department of Forestry, Fishery, and, and, and Environment, of which uh, SENBI and, and SENPACS uh, report to, to, the, to the mother body, uh, uh, the department. And this cooperation is in the field of environmental and climate change. Uh, it's a bilateral uh, cooperation in the context of what happened like post-COVID-19, looking at economic recovery, uh, funding conservation activities, and also looking into the support of small, medium enterprise and also long-term challenges, uh, especially in the just and the green uh, transition. So those are a few examples of international cooperation that we have as South Africa and, and France. Thank you very much. So, yeah, and we can keep in mind that in the, this context of post-pandemic, the need for funding and sustainable tourism is really a, a, a very key issue uh, for, uh, for the 30 by 30 targets. Mm. Thank you. And so, Señor Jorge Alonso Rodriguez, Spain is a, a country, you're representing a country which has a, a diversity of areas of cooperation. We saw that you are a member state of the European Union, you are also in the Mediterranean area, you have also overseas territories, uh, some uh, um, uh, regions uh, that not are, are in mainland. Um, uh, how would you like to, to illustrate your needs and expectations uh, through cooperation and networking of uh, protected areas managers to achieve the 30 by 30 uh, objective, please? Okay. Yeah. Um, first, first of all, yeah, I'm Jorge Alonso. I, I work at the Ministry uh, for Ecological Transition of Spain, and I, I wanted to firstly to thank the Office Francaise pour la Biodiversité for inviting uh, us for giving our perspective in, in this field. Um, yeah, actually Spain as, as a member state, uh, as an European member state, uh, is really engaged with, uh, with network of MPAs, uh, of networks of protected areas, specifically with, with Natura 2000. Um, we act Actually, our uh, our the the seven the twenty seven percent of our terrestrial area and up to eight percent of our marine waters are uh, included in in Natura two thousand. And so, um, as uh, Theo, Mr. Theo, said before, uh, the Natura two thousand is the largest uh, network of protected areas around the world, and. 
uh, as a uh, network of, of protected areas, uh, is, it is essential, the cooperation is, is essential. And in this sense, I believe the, the biogeographical process that have been launched uh, are uh, essential uh, are essential to to ensure uh, that the Natura 2000 is able to respond to the to the objectives that are set to to the conservation of habitat and and, and species. And regarding uh, this issue, um, I would like to add that there are two pillars or two uh, elements uh, which should be inherent to the proper Natura 2000 and also to the biogeographical process and that have to uh, steer the process uh, to uh, achieve a real coherent and effective uh, network of protected areas. Those two pillars uh, are the science and the participation. I think that this idea has been also highlighted in the, in the, previous, in the previous presentation. Uh, actually, uh, we believe that science should be at the basis for creating and developing a, a network of protected area which is ecologically coherent. And also science should be at the basis, at the core of all the decisions that have to be done and made uh, in order to achieve the conservation objectives that are uh, uh, set by this uh, Natura 2000, and respecting regarding the, participa the participation, we, we also believe that uh, participation is is a key issue. Actually, uh, we are talking about networks of protected areas, so we need the participation and involvement of not only member states but also managers and also uh, all the stakeholders. And participation also is, is needed in order to, to achieve the effectiveness of these networks, uh, as I will explain a little bit later. No? And those two pillars that I think have to steer the work of Natura 2000 and, and the work of the biogeographical process has also been assumed uh, by Spain when uh, achieving our, our objectives. In Spain, uh, nowadays, um, we are, thanks to to a political momentum and also thanks to other uh, interesting EU co-finance projects such as Intemares project, uh, have uh, now committed to, to declare and approve the, the, the protection of 30% of our marine waters. And let me refer now to, to marine issues that it's the one that I, I know better. Uh, and is committed to, to approve this uh, protection of 30% by the, uh, 2030. And, and for this, uh, to achieve this, we have launched different initiatives that all include those two pillars that I have referred to before. No? Firstly, of, firstly, we have um, uh, initiated and launched a scientific uh, process in order to uh, identify the new areas that merit to be protected. And after this process, we have already initiated the administrative procedure to protect those areas. Actually, we are planning to uh, approve the, uh, protect uh, the 25% of our marine waters in two years, in 2025. And this from one side. In another, in another, another initiative we are focusing on is the, the needed for, for an effective management of these uh, sites, of these marine protected areas that have been uh, declared. Uh, for this, for, for focusing on, on effective management, we are, we are dealing firstly, of course, with, with the science. We believe the science should be at the basis of all the decisions that are made. And, and although also we are, we are also um, very uh, relying on, on the particip participatory approaches. We, we believe that, uh, uh, for instance, when elaborating uh, the management plans that have to be elaborated once the, the MPAs have been uh, declared. We, we are facilitating uh, rooms, are facilitating uh, uh, discussions among stakeholders in order to try to agree on a common diagnosis of the problems related to each of the sites and also try to agree on the, on the solutions, the solutions that are finally 
included in the management plan through conservation measures. And so this approach, we believe, it's also not only the, the, the path to achieve the effective management, but also the path to finally uh, be able to approve uh, management plans that are going to be uh, accepted by all the stakeholders. And finally, the third work we are uh, focusing on is the the development of a master plan of all the network of marine protected areas. This ma master plan have been developed uh, by, uh, together all together with all the managers, all the competent authorities, and and this master plan is focusing on on these ideas. Which we're trying to to create and to develop a network of MP8 which is coherent. Uh, regarding the ecological criteria, regarding representativity, adequacy, resilience, connectivity, etc. And we are also focusing on, on having a, a, a network of MPA which is efficient. We are working with managers to try to, to find the solution, better solutions to, to real have uh, efficient uh, MPAs. And finally, we are working on, on creating a, a, a governance structure to steer the work of this uh, network, uh, which will uh, include uh, representative of not only managers, but also uh, scientific community and, and stakeholders. So these are, this is the, 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 the challenge we have ahead of us, and these are the, the main tools we are, we are trying to, to, we are working on in order to, to face all the challenge ahead of us. Muchas gracias. <laughs> So, um, yes, okay, so I have uh, some good news. We have some room to take some questions from, uh, from the audience. So I will let you the floor if you, uh, just one or two questions, yes, please. So can, uh, can th there is a micro, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Um, my name is Porik. I work for the Irish Wildlife Trust. We're an, an NGO in Ireland, obviously a member of the European Union. Um, my question really is about marine protected areas because even if we reach 30% um, MPAs in the EU, what we really have at the moment are paper parks. We're, in, we're not doing any actual protection. So we have a bit of a divorce between what we're doing on the ground and what's... Um, uh, and what we're saying at conferences like this and, and, uh, and what we're showing on maps. And what, what my question is really for the, for the panelists who are uh, in the European Union, um, are we recognizing this problem because um, we have a common fisheries policy that is basically overriding conservation measures? It's, it's technical, but basically marine or uh, member states are objecting to conservation measures in other member states and then effectively what we're getting is no uh, protection at all. And only recently the Minister for Fisheries in Spain was objecting to banning bottom trawling in certain areas that are in Irish waters, for instance. So, I mean, are the member states recognizing the problem with the common fisheries policy and the contradictions and are you working to get over that problem? Thank you. Thank you for the, your question. I don't know. Would you like to? Yeah, I I fully I fully agree with with you. Um, I, I I believe the the effective management I, I would say is the the, the the first challenge we have I have the has uh, and 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 that's why I I want to stress the need for 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 participation and for science for try to, to, to address or try to, to assume those principles as the way to, to face all these challenges. Um, we, we need, we need to, to have uh, the fisheries sectors on board uh, if we want to have, uh, if, if, we don't, if we want to avoid paper parts as well. We, we, we need to, to, to make them believe on the need for effective measures and, and I think what we are trying to do in Spain is uh, actually working with them, with working with the competent authorities in terms in fisheries, but also with the sector, with the, with the fishermen, and try to, to, to come to an agreement and, and try to, to, um, 
make them sh uh, see uh, how important how 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 is the how is the importance of of train really to to address those pressures in uh, if we want to to have a real pr a real protection of of marine biodiversity and if i can put uh, add something in addition we can use well in in europe in the framework of the european union we have a, also a series of of tools of frameworks like uh, the marine spatial planning directive also and that we can use for that for governance for participation and to uh, take strategic decision maker making uh, in uh, in favor of uh, of uh, uh, conservation marine conservation uh, for instance um, uh, we'll take a last question please uh, can, can we pass the micro uh, to participatory side event for Thank you, Fenia. Uh, yeah, just following the previous intervention on the element of management, and I think that when we talk about networks of uh, marine protected areas or terrestrial protected areas, but I'm representing a network of marine protected areas in the Mediterranean, MedPen, and I want to stress that normally the countries put much more effect in the designation and the map than in the management, mm -hmm. and we thought a real network of managers, of practitioners supporting uh, the, the, the action on the sites, we will never have real networks of protected areas. So uh, I, what I want to stress is the need to invest more at this management and governance levels uh, once we establish, because Natura 2000 terrestrial, well, that's a substantive part that is more or less managed. I will not enter into the details. But Marine, the big majority is paper parks today in Europe. The big majority. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is the case of Spain. I'm living, I live in front of uh, Natura 2000 site in, in my city, Tarragona. There's exactly zero management. Zero. Mm -hmm. no, not not, not less, less is impossible. Zero. And this happens in many places. So that's great. I'm happy when my ministry wants to reach the 30 person, but please not 30 person in paper. Invest on management, invest in giving uh, build, on build capacity, building capacity of managers. So for instance, for MEPAN, we have experience in supporting managers across the Mediterranean, uh, allowing them to meet other managers from east, north, south, so learn, learning by real practitioners, which is what is more, more needed. You cannot send all the managers to do a master's degree of two years at university, but they, you can send them to spend one week or two weeks in another country or in the same country. And one of the things we are doing now with the experience regionally is support the creation of national networks of marine protected areas, also in Spain. So, and we really hope that this model of allowing the networks being connected on the ground uh, can really, in short term, in short term, allow to have real managed networks of protected areas. So I think this is something that uh, is not uh, on the table of the negotiations. Unfortunately, we put the focus on the quantity, not so much on the quality. And there's uh, the target three is uh, dealing with all this. But I wanted just to talk from the experience that this is the big, the big challenge, managing the protected areas once we put in the map. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much, Puri. Indeed, we can say that capacity building, it's the DNA of uh, networking activities among uh, protected areas managers. And there is a lot to, uh, to bring uh, from uh, these uh, networking uh, organizations. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, we are arriving at the very end of, uh, of the side event. So could you please join the audience? I, I will invite um, the... Well, the uh, representatives of the co-organizers of the side event, so Monsieur Guillaume Chiron and Georgis Sapignaskas, please. Um, so before I let you the floor, I would like to save the date for, uh, for uh, the next international big event uh, related to marine protected areas, that's Impact 5, that's just right after COP15 and the decisions that we will have for the implementation of the global biodiversity uh, framework. Uh, so IMPACT5 is the fifth international MPA Congress. It's also organized by Canada. It's in February in Vancouver. 
It's every four years, uh, so a little bit more. The last time it was in Chile in 2017. And it's a, it's a really great rendezvous for the community of MPA managers and their partners, should they be scientific institutional. So we are, the community of MPA managers are expecting this great moment to see concretely how to implement the marine targets of, uh, of a global biodiversity framework. And it will be, be just before the next sessions of uh, negotiations in the high seas in BBNG. So we are really living tremendous months right now for, uh, for marine issues and the 30 by 30 target. But first, uh, so, uh, um, yeah. First, the French Development Agency, l'Agence Française de Développement, Monsieur Guillaume Chiron. <coughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so, well, I just would like to come back on the, the question raised at the beginning of, uh, of this uh, event, which is uh, how to contribute to the 30 by 30, and how a development bank, a public development bank like uh, AFD could uh, promote this idea. Uh, we heard from our colleagues from the EU uh, that uh, in European Union, just 25% of the territorial uh, area are protected and uh, just 11% of the marine area. So that means that at the worldwide level, it is a quite a challenge to be able to, to reach these 30% of the planet to be protected by 2030. And uh, of course, it is a, a big challenge for all of us, uh, for Development Public Bank, for NGOs, for uh, public uh, uh, expertise and uh, how to deal, uh, how to do it uh, all together. It's one of the questions. And uh, <coughs> I, I think that for uh, AFD, we've got two, two main possibilities, two main tools. The first one is, of course, as a development public bank, to be able uh, to provide funds for the different countries where we intervene. And so AFD uh, make uh, the, the commitments to, uh, to increase uh, its uh, funding for biodiversity. Uh, linking to the fact that uh, we are, as you know, probably uh, uh, the French Development Agency, 100% uh, 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 related to the Climate uh, Paris Agreement, and that uh, uh, <coughs> we, uh, we, we have the objective to have 30% of the global uh, climate finance uh, uh, favorable for, for nature. That means that uh, we've got now the objective to have 1 billion of euros of commitment for biodiversity uh, for 2025, so uh, in five years' time. And we just start from less than the 500 uh, million of euros. So that means that we have to double our commitment for biodiversity in five years. So it's a, it's a, it's a, huge, uh, it's a huge, <coughs> huge objective. And so, of course, uh, to do it, we, we, we have to, to be able to, to get some additional funds, which is not so easy. For the moment, uh, IFD is providing more or less 100 million of euros uh, for the, what we call the, uh, the, the CAD2 uh, uh, project. That means that the project we are a direct link uh, to, to biodiversity uh, conservation, so protected areas, uh, Global, uh, global funds like uh, we are funding the Legacy Landscape Fund, we are funding the Blue Action Fund for the marine protected areas, we are also funding uh, some uh, <coughs> conservation trust funds, so all of that funding, it represents more or less 100 uh, million a year, and the global commitments of AAD for biodiversity is 500, mm. wait, 580 million euros last year, so it representing uh, just 5% of our global commitments. Uh, so that, that means that we have to continue to, uh, to increase our commitment, our funding commitment. But like uh, it has been said uh, by our colleague from Medpan, uh, of course we do not want to uh, finance uh, paper parks. Uh, and that's quite important to have, uh, to have protected area well managed. Uh, and that's why we are thinking that it's quite important for us, for uh, an agency like AFD, uh, to be able to support uh, global uh, uh, on different type of network. We start to, uh, to support different type of NGOs. So we've got uh, uh, MOU with uh, <coughs> the, the biggest one in the world, the uh, Conservation International, WCS, WWF, TNC. Uh, we try to also to, uh, to, to be able to, to involve and to promote the, 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 the French NGOs, which, are, which is uh, 
uh, much more complicated because uh, five or ten years ago it was uh, quite difficult to have some French NGOs to be uh, involved in uh, protected areas in the world, which is not already the case because we've got uh, NGOs like uh, Noé Conservation, like uh, uh, Nitide, which is uh, which are, uh, are now intervening in many uh, many countries, so that's quite good. And uh, we had also some uh, MOU on the on the uh, <coughs> on the to 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 be able to involve the French expertise uh, uh, abroad. Uh, so it was the case with the La Fédération des Parcs Naturels Régionaux. And uh, we, we think two years ago that it could be quite interesting also to mobilize the, the global uh, protected area network uh, with uh, 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 Réserve Naturelle de France, with the Conservatoire des Espaces Naturels, uh, again with the Fédération des Parcs Naturels Régionaux. And it is why we, we support uh, that idea and uh, funding uh, by uh, 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 specific resources from AFD, which is the, 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 the resources for the partnership. And so we mobilized first uh, uh, some, uh, I don't know exactly the figures, but at the end, I think that it represents 120,000 uh, euros to, to be able to, uh, to support that network. And uh, today, we are quite, uh, quite happy because we've seen some results. First of all, that uh, this network is able now to have uh, other type of funders, uh, uh, like uh, the, the French ministries, like uh, the, the Office Francais pour la Biodiversité, and should be able also to, uh, to work closely with uh, Expertise France, which is uh, a part of uh, the AFD group, so it's quite uh, relevant. And I will not mention again uh, the two projects that you, uh, you already uh, uh, mentioned during your presentation, Marie, but uh, we, we've got this first, pro this first project uh, in Varuna, uh, for Varuna in the Indian Ocean, which is quite relevant, and the other one, which is uh, in Morocco, with uh, uh, AFD is funding a development policy loan for the forestry and protected areas, and uh, we try, with Expertise France, to be able to provide technical assistance to the Ministry of, forest, uh, of Forestry in Morocco, and uh, the Expertise France was able to, uh, to catch the expertise from RNF on the global, uh, global uh, protected area network to be able to provide some, well, peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, on the exchange of expertise with the, the, our, 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 our counterparts from Morocco. So I think it's quite interesting. We have to develop it. It is, not, uh, it is the first step of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of a new history. And uh, we are thinking that uh, it should be it, sh it, it will be quite relevant for AFD to to be able to continue to support this French expertise abroad. And I know that already you've got some touch with other countries, and uh, in the biggest one like uh, China, like uh, South Africa, the colleagues from South Africa, South Africa just mentioned some uh, some uh, different uh, type of uh, exchange of expertise already with Sanbi, uh, OFB, and others. So it's quite uh, it's quite relevant too. And I think that in Turkey also we've got uh, some possibilities to uh, to have intervention. So uh, th that's the global idea to uh, to be able to to support this uh, global platform to to be able to to provide uh, technical assistance, expertise, peer to peer review uh, for the different countries where we've got intervention. So to be able to avoid at the maximum the, this kind of paper parks and to be able to, to give well technical support expertise for for, for our country for the countries where AFD is intervening. Thank you. Yeah so we have some examples of uh, global platforms that enables to reach the managers on the ground and this is part of, uh, of the examples that uh, you mentioned with South Africa, with Varuna, with uh, many others. And, and also for the protected areas managers, take your pencils and write down the applications because you say the, you double the funds for, uh, for biodiversity and the 30 by 30 target. So we have to get all this ready. We will try. Yes. <laughs> uh, so last but not least, uh, um, your view from the Global uh, Environment Facility, please. Thank you very much and good afternoon, everyone. It was a great pleasure to host this event in our pavilion and I think it highlighted great tools and ongoing and upcoming cooperation partnership on which the GEF partnership itself can build to help uh, our recipient countries in uh, uh, implementing 
target three of the global biodiversity framework uh, target on area-based <laughs> conservation measures. Uh, area-based conservation measures were in the DNA. I've been in the DNA of the Jeff since inception. We have uh, significantly contributed to the implementation of IC target 11 and will continue with uh, target three in the future. And I think our, our first and main well, our first contribution uh, to the target will be our past investment. Uh, as you know, we work uh, with four-year cycles, and we just finished a cycle uh, last June. And the projects we funded the, the past four years collectively have committed to contribute to the expansion and the improved management effectiveness of over 1.4 billion hectares of protected areas, uh, which is more than the size of Europe, uh, mainly marine protected areas uh, because we have seen our recipient countries uh, giving more priority to marine work in these recent years and just a few examples that are the, the most recent ones uh, in our last uh, council in june we approved uh, 25 million support to the enduring earth partnership to support three countries including gabon uh, and namibia to expand improve the management effectiveness on the area where they have already conservation measures and most importantly secure long-term uh, financing to ensure that this will last uh, significantly and Gabon thanks to the support will uh, likely be able to reach the 30 percent target. Namibia is already above 40 percent but they need to ensure effective uh, management, especially in the community conservation areas, and so that, that support will do that. Directly related to this event, yesterday we had a, um, an event presenting uh, a project we, that got the get-go for implementation from us uh, last March. It is implemented by WWF and that is currently piloting in six countries uh, across the globe in different regions, uh, methodologies for inclusive planning for Target 3. Uh, and that will publish a global guide, global guidance that hopefully will be uh, useful for the implementation of uh, all parties. And that's the past. And now, since July, we have moved to what we call Jeff 8, our funding for the next four years, uh, where we design a comprehensive package uh, with a biodiversity strategy and 11 integrated programs uh, to help countries address the root causes of uh, biodiversity loss. So we. We are um, in providing incentives for countries to look beyond just the area-based conservation measure and not isolate target three, uh, but obviously look at the wider landscapes. I won't go into details into that package because it takes close to 300 pages to describe. Uh, what I will I highlight as one point is that substantial resources will be available from the Jeff. We concluded the the most successful replenishment ever uh, with a total budget of 5.33 billion US dollars over the next four years and uh, replenishment participants decided to increase the allocation to biodiversity so in total accounting for uh, all the projects we are committing to have to display uh, biodiversity co-benefits the Jeff will be providing 3 billion US dollars over the next four years uh, to implement the convention and uh, uh, both protocols. Um, so I won't go into details, but I'll provide a teaser. We, I will invite you to uh, come back to this uh, pavilion. We have almost three events almost every day during this COP, and we are organizing five official site events. Uh, and I will highlight two. One is on December 16 uh, at 6 15 p.m., so the evening session, where we'll go into detail in the Jeff 8 programming offer, so, so that you will know in granular detail uh, what are the following opportunities for the implementation of the global biodiversity framework in the forthcoming years. And on December 14 at lunchtime, our CEO, Carlos Manuel Rodriguez, will share his high-level perspective on Jeff 8 and beyond, and we'll have a general uh, exchange with the audience, so it's a great occasion if you want to know more about the Jeff and discuss directly with the, the CEO. Uh, so thank you very much for coming to this event, and please do come back uh, to our pavilion, and I hope you'll have a nice, a nice conference of the parties with a successful outcome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. May, may I have a last word on, on, on Jeff project because uh, maybe you don't know, but Jeff is becoming very innovative in uh, in uh, the project it, it supports um, because 
Well, it's all about area. Well, you, you have been explaining that you are supporting area-based conservation tools uh, and, and community managed um, areas, conservation areas. Uh, but Jeff has been also supporting network of MPA managers, regional network of MPA managers. This is very innovative uh, and from the French Biodiversity Agency, we are really very supportive with uh, this kind of, of project. This happens in the Mediterranean again, and it's even more innovative because it's not only the MedPan as a regional network of MPA managers, it's jointly with MedFound, which is a trust fund to uh, support effective management and address biodiversity loss. So as MedPan uh, has been asked from the European Commission to uh, bring its expertise in other marine regions. And there, is the, there was the Transatlantic, Transatlantic MPA network that now becomes ocean governance and much more global in several marine regions uh, and networks. We hope that Jeff can duplicate uh, this kind of, of projects and really uh, strengthen the, the regional networks of MPAs and, and trust funds and this kind of innovative projects in the future. So thank you very much for the support also. And thank you also for, uh, for the audience and for uh, being with us to today here in Montreal at COP15 and also online for uh, people, especially from France, who are, who are following and it's becoming late. So thank you very much.